recently on the Joe Rogan Experience, this is what he said about Ric Flair's legendary finisher, the figure four. Uh, a bunch of wrestlers got mad at me because I was trying to because Tony and I were watching pro wrestling and I was trying to explain how dumb a figure four <laughs> leg lock was because I was like he's literally giving up an inside heel hook because an inside heel hook is one of the most devastating submission techniques because once once someone gets it the time you have to tap is so small before your your knee gets ripped apart yeah and so a figure four leg lock <laughs> you will never see in a jujitsu competition because as someone said it doesn't work. <laughs> And Ric Flair's response to that. You get a lot of attention for calling me out. The only way to resolve this is to have me on the show. I'll put you in the figure four and we'll see if you can take it. Let's go. Woo! Later on in this video, we will see who is right between Joe Rogan and Ric Flair about the figure four leg lock. Does the figure four leg lock work? Can it work in an MMA fight? These questions will be answered later. Before we get to those questions, I think it will be good to take a look at a history of the figure four and see its applications. And that's what we will do before we address the real questions. This is the way, Tony and David, that you do the figure four leg lock by the master, Ric Flair. Well, no, not, that's, that's not accurate, too. George Scott came to me, who I never get enough thanks and enough gratitude from me as uh, George Scott was the booker. And he knew Buddy real well. And he said, Rick, I think we should try something with you where you could, you know, patting yourself a little bit after Buddy Ryan. But wait a minute, there's that thing you gotta look for, the figure four grapevine. Now watch him, Billy. He's already submitted, the bell's been rung. Now watch, Buddy. Only man in the history of professional wrestling ever to hold the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and the World Wide Wrestling Federation Championship, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. He's also the man who developed the figure four leg grapevine and the atomic knee drop. And uh, Buddy, uh, obviously, the figure four leg grapevine has become perhaps one of the most devastating and most successful holds in professional wrestling. Well, I believe in both of them because I invented that hold and it's been very good to me. But if you look back through the history of it, by golly, Jack Briscoe used it and became champion, and Eddie Graham was a superb wrestler. He used it, his son Mike Graham used it. Uh, there's many other wrestlers have used it, and everyone have been very, very successful. But I would like to say this, Austin Idol, who I've worked out with and is in superior shape, and I do believe stands to be the next world champion if he gets that chance, does know his hold and knows it thoroughly. And I do know that if he puts it on someone, he will get the job done. I'll tell you what, I wonder, buddy, there are a lot of people who aren't familiar with seeing the whole, they've seen it applied upon occasion, but I don't think they've ever seen it applied in, if you will, slow motion and working through it. All right, Buddy Rogers is going to demonstrate now. Uh, he has uh, Buzz Sawyer and Don Serrano in the ring. Now, mind you, they're going to be going at about one quarter speed. Now, notice he places the foot in between the two, crosses the leg over. Sawyer then comes down on his back. Now, clamps over. And even without trying to put any pressure on, you could see the, the pain cross the face of Don Serrano. Because once that is, you have four points of pressure. Four points of pressure on the two ankles and the two knees. And consequently, it's this kneecap right here where the leg runs across. That's where the main pressure is. And as you heard Buddy Rogers say, the main pressure is on the one kneecap. But there are four points and obviously an extremely dangerous situation. Uh, separating them now once again. But there you have it. Nature Buddy Rogers demonstrating exactly how the figure four is uh, placed on an opponent. It's the way a lot of particularly no-gi fights go down. What, what are your thoughts on that? I've always been a very much uh, fan for leg locks. 
I remember a long time ago, my friend Eric Paulson, he showed me a tape. Just rip it. <laughs> Judo Jean was on the Joe Rogan experience. This is what he said about Carl Gotch. Gotch loved the Jiu Jitsu guys. He loved it when they were laying on their backs and sticking their legs in the air. And this was easy for him because he would just grab one of the legs and break it. What are you doing? Hold on, let me see this. Drops. Oh, yeah, that's totally legit. Yeah, Yo, dude, if you can get a guy into that position, that shit will hurt. Yep. If you get a guy like Gordon Ryan puts you in something like that just for fun, yeah, yeah he'll fuck your legs up. But you would, there's a natural way to defend it that it doesn't seem like the guy's defending it. That's why. I, like, right like, there. look. Oh, he's trying to keep him from putting it in there. Oh, he stepped on his dick. Is he stepping on his dick? A little bit. That's the Undertaker. So that allow, you're allowed to. Okay. Oh, this is a sharp. His legs down. Oh, no, boom. it is. Oh, yeah, that's a heel hook. Yeah. That's okay. The different. guy. See, here's why this is so fucking stupid. The guy who's getting his leg cranked is actually the guy who's in the best position. He's in a heel hook position. Yeah. So you just grab his leg, right? So who's supposed to be getting hurt here? <laughs> this the is actually the, the guy in black. The guy in black is no, no. The guy in black is, has a better position. Well, All he has to do is reach back with his right arm and hook time his out. elbow onto the ankle. No, you time out, motherfucker. This is not you a figure four this leg is, lock. This is embarrassing. That's a heel hook. He's giving him a heel hook, and the other guy's pretending he's in pain. This is crazy. This isn't even a figure four leg lock. This I don't even know what this is. It's modified a modified figure four. So, oh, yeah. oh, come on. Look, he's in agony. No, he's got a fucking heel hook. Take the heel hook. It's right there. You go like this. You clamp your hands together. The match is over. Sakuraba was so special. Oh, my God. This generation that didn't get to watch him fight has to go back and look at those fights. Oh, they have to go back. There's crazy, wild wrestling. There's actually a system or, or a style, catch as catch can, that underpins what's going on there. There's a way to learn this so you can be like those guys. Well, Sakuraba's beat all the crazy, the, the best of the crazies, four of them. And, uh, you know, sure, guys get older, they get injured. Get lined up. He's not as good now as what he once was. But you go back, say to early 2000. There was nobody, nobody better. Nobody could beat him. Yeah. Nobody. Great. Well, and that is one of my boys, and that's a catch can. can. I was trying to explain how Dama figure four leg lock was because I was like, he's literally giving up an inside heel hook because the inside heel hook is one of the most devastating submission techniques because once once someone gets it, the time you have to tap is so small before your your knee gets ripped apart. Yeah, and so a figure four leg lock, you will never see in a jujitsu competition. Now we go back to the question of does the figure four work? We saw the history of it, and we saw it does inflict pain. Joe Rogan even admits that professional wrestling moves do hurt, and they could work when it's a high skill versus an unskilled opponent. But can a figure four work in BJJ? <laughs> ラジオ時に入って完全に決まってどうしても面白い技で勝ちたい範囲ここで少し手を抜いて決めないようにしますで、上の足でこれを作ってきますで、作ってくるときにお尻を少しちょっと出し膝を蹴って Well, according to the legendary Sakuraba, there could be 
a figure four or what he referred to as a figure eight. As you can see, his was a little bit different. His foot was not exposed for the other person to reach for it. It was kind of hidden. Yet, there is a figure four in the leg locking game. Now, no one has not hit it yet. So, Joe Rogan is correct in that he said no one could do a figure four in a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournament. Yet, it is possible. It would take someone that's highly skilled versus someone that is unskilled for this to happen. Therefore, there's low probability that a figure four can be hit in BJJ or MMA. The problem is always going to be that in the wrestling setup, if it was used in MMA or BJJ, then that person's leg would be exposed to an Achilles lock. Therefore, Joe Rogan is right to where a figure four has not been shown to work yet. And also at the same time, he says that it does hurt. So what do you guys think?